you're out there, you're riding, you're having a good time and uh, taking in the, the outdoors. The fight isn't over. going on guys this is Carl with the Racer Red channel so today I'm racing the bar fight hair scramble which is located in Little Jim Cycle Park in Emmett Idaho this is going to be an amazing race with perfect traction and as you can see the front line goes there and we are next my bike doesn't start right away as usual but uh, it does pull pretty well and I end up um, catching this group and I end up in third place by the end of this straightaway. Um, then I make a pass um, for second place shortly after that in one of the corners. Um, that bike in front of me right there is actually a 250 four-stroke. It's a KTM. And, um, what shocks me is like during the straightaways, that thing doesn't seem to be at a disadvantage. I mean, the the power those 250s are making is just crazy. That thing was pulling me pretty good on some of the straightaways. So it was in the corners and um, downhills and things like that where I found opportunities to uh, make passes. So this guy in front of me here, he's on a 250 or 300 two-stroke um, and I follow him for quite a ways. I should probably mention that I had the flu for um, three days prior to this race and so I spent most of that time just hanging around the house and laying in bed napping and so it it's already a struggle for me as far as endurance but in this race you'll see that happen uh, much sooner so I last maybe half a lap before uh, my speed slows down quite a bit so the people that I have passed start passing me back and um, Eventually, during this race, I slow down to the point where I just stop. I'll stop and like take breaks here and there, and um, I had no expectation at that point. In fact, during this race, I wasn't going... Well, before this race, I, I had no plans on actually racing. Um, I was just going to go to support my brother, and so um, I figured, well, I'll just bring my bike just in case. And then once I got there, I was actually too late to sign up, and they let me sign up. Uh, my brother was late as well, and I was like, well, I might as well just sign up. So I signed up, and I was like, well, I'll just roll the course. I won't, I won't try to go fast. And sure enough, the, start, the race starts, and of course I'm going to try to win. So I, I went fast for as long as I could anyway. I knew it, I knew it was going to be pretty short-lived um, because I'm, just, I, yeah, I'm taking several naps a day, and I'm just really getting over this flu so I, I knew for sure um, I was gonna have horrible cardio and that's the case anyways that's not that's a, an excuse really um, because you know it, it, cardio has always been a struggle for me um, but not to this extent <laughs> usually I'd be able to go at least a lap of this kind of course um, maybe even two or three but on this one I was feeling pretty exhausted so at this point of the race I'm actually still uh, feeling pretty good and in fact I remember thinking because I'm quite a bit faster than everybody except for one rider in my class during this race um, skill wise I, that's just my opinion I I think that uh, you know it reminds me every time I get behind some of these guys that all it would take is is for me to get that endurance and really that's part of your stats like I've said that before that's part of your stats as a writer is your endurance so that uh, it doesn't matter if you're the most skilled person in the world if you can't go uh, an entire lap or well an entire race at a good speed so um, definitely something to work on for sure should be pretty fun next year if I can um, drop some weight and everything 
So this guy in front of me is making quite a bit of mistakes. I'm not able to capitalize on it, waste a lot of energy, and slow down quite a bit trying to pass him. Um, I just found that it was really hard to get by him. I knew my speed was way, way faster, but I just couldn't find the right opportunity. And so I keep on trying and keep on struggling to get by. And it actually doesn't happen. It's, uh, it's a spoiler. Spoiler alert. <laughs> it, uh, it's pretty much second place um, from here until uh, Carter Steers passes me. Um, right here and this is as he was passing me I remember thinking I'm like man I'm tired I was so tired right here <laughs> I was like way abnormally tired uh, for this uh, distance into the race but uh, the rider in front of me right here he's a really good rider like he's he'd probably beat me anyways he's super fast but uh, I felt like that's that's kind of the frustrating thing is I want to know what it's like to be up against um, all the other riders as as a uh, super super um, basically just someone who's able to go the distance just as fast as I can go because I see that out of a lot of these riders they are going the same speed at the end of the race as they are at the beginning of the race and I have I have it's beyond me how they do that because. Um, my speed is like not even close like even right here my speed isn't even close to what it was at the beginning of the race so I'm slowing down considerably so definitely something to work on and it uh, it's definitely inspiring because like I, uh, I watch this guy in front of me um, every race and he's like he's just hauling like all the way through the race I'm pretty sure I could keep up with him but he's he's pretty fast like um, if I had the endurance to just go all race as fast as I could, it would be a close matchup with the rider that, right in front of me right here. And he's quite a bit faster than the person in front of him. He just hasn't gotten the opportunity to make a pass yet. Um, there's, he's just being patient. It's a long race, so um, he'll definitely make his pass, and then he'll just be gone. I mean, he's quite a bit faster than, than uh, the one in front of him. This KTM 450 was running amazing. Um, I, I'm reminded of that when I get really tired and I'm unable to use the clutch anymore. Like later in the race, it was just amazing to uh, to just get tired and then I would just roll on and it would just wheelie. It would bring the front end up off the ground and just the bike is a rocket ship. So um, there's not a lot I can really fault on the bike. Again, it just goes back to endurance. Um, it gets to the point where I can't hold on to the handlebars, um, I can't catch my breath, I can't stand up off of uh, the seat, so I have to sit down during a lot of these hard hits. really looking forward to next year of racing like I know um, this year has been a struggle I've been on the struggle bus as far as getting endurance scored away but I really I'm motivated to uh, know what would happen if I was able to go full speed the entire race because uh, I feel much faster and I know I'm much faster than most everybody that beats me um, but the endurance is, is the issue, so I, I'm pretty motivated to get that under control and see what happens. Pretty excited. So you'll, I mean, at, at this point of the race, I'm still keeping up, um, and that's not because I'm going full speed. That's just because um, the speed difference between me and the rider in front of me is quite a big difference. So I'm at like 80% here. Um, I think that uh, I get past here before too long uh, by even another rider, and uh, after that it just goes downhill. I'm I'm pretty compromised at, at this section of the race or at this portion of the race. But the soil was beautiful. The, the soil was just perfect, chocolate cake traction everywhere. I mean, it was it was really good. 
the day was uh, approximately 60 degrees and just clear skies, which was just absolutely amazing. Um, we had a bunch of rain come through a few days ago, and that's what is really making this soil so perfect. I mean, the soil is not really muddy anywhere on the course. It's like it was perfectly groomed. I mean, you couldn't ask for better conditions. So as I showed up to the race, um, I, I came to the race with all my cameras and everything and my gear and I was going to take pictures and film the, uh, the entire event without actually competing in it. And I got to the race and I was like, you know what, even if I just roll the course, like it's just too perfect of a day, I have to at least try. And I'm definitely glad I did. Um, I got fourth, which is last in my class, but... Um, I was still glad to be out there riding because it was just beautiful conditions. So this five-speed transmission um, is a little bit annoying sometimes. I wish there was a six-speed at certain points and, and mainly that's because of the low end. Um, I kind of struggled with gearing on this thing to uh, completely find that happy medium. Uh, I've gone to a 13-tooth countershaft and the stock. Uh, rear sprocket and that seems to work out pretty good for me. I've gone to a 12 counter shaft and that actually brings down the top speed uh, too much to the point where I'm just topping out in these desert races. So um, here you can see I'm I'm actually I'm caught up to the guy in front of me despite my um, inability to even hold on at this point. This is um, I, it's hard for me to convey uh, exactly how tired I was at this stage of the race and, and we're not even done with one lap yet. I was so exhausted. But uh, anyways, yeah, the uh, four speed or the five speed rather, um, it works pretty good. It just doesn't work really good. I mean, I've gone to a 12 tooth and then I'm just topping out everywhere. I just, I don't have enough top end speed for these races. And so I, from there I went to a 14 tooth and that works pretty good for wide open races. But then I use the bike for the purpose that I, the places that I like to ride. And I found that it is just a little bit, um, a little bit too high geared for crawling around. I chose horrible lines through here. Um, horrible, horrible lines. That left line that he just passed me on is where it's at. So. Um, later on in the race, I started taking that line much faster. I was, I fell into this ravine here. Oh man, horrible, horrible line choice. Um, just because I didn't know what was coming up. So, um, lots of whoops in this right-hand line. Over on the left, it's just a straightaway. Like you can just haul in that left lane. Yeah, you gotta kind of learn the course as you go, obviously, but. Um, by the time, um, you know, lap three rolled around, I would, yeah, I was severely compromised as far as uh, how fast I could go uh, just normally, but I had the lines pretty much down pat. Like I could figure out exactly what I wanted to do, where I wanted to go, and um, I could avoid a lot of the major, <clears throat> a lot of the major uh, issues on the track. But, uh, some of these downhills were actually pretty gnarly. I was wondering about that um, when I was going down them. So um, the guy that just passed me, he took a really, that nice smooth line there on the left. Um, I'll catch him going down these hills here in a bit. And uh, you'll see some of these downhills are pretty gnarly. And um, the gnarlier the terrain, that's generally the uh, place where I excel. I, I go faster and faster as the terrain gets sketchier and sketchier. So. Um, I catch up really fast, um, but I'm not able to make a pass, and I have no desire to make a pass um, at this stage of the race because I know I know where my uh, endurance is going, and it's really just pointless to pass anybody because um, I know I know that I'm slowing down at a high rate. I'd like to thank a lot of the people who um, came out and supported me. Like I, I received a lot of support um, during this race just from cool people. Some I didn't know, some I did, but um, it was pretty awesome to to see people cheering 
cheering me on and um, other cheering other people on and helping out in the pits when I needed it. Um, I had to ask like complete strangers for uh, for water in the pits. I pitted a few times during this race, and that's another thing I should mention because I didn't plan on racing. I didn't bring like my whole race setup, so I had no water or anything like that. I had no hydration pack whatsoever. So I had no access to water, so I would just stop in the pits and, and get water where I could, and people were really helpful. This bike does really good on gas. That's one thing I've noticed. And a lot of that's probably due to the fact that uh, as a 450, it's just not getting run as hard. But um, I, I think it's a 2.26 uh, gallon tank. And it seems to do really well. I've I've never had any trouble um, running long days with it, and uh, even races don't seem to take too much out of it. So this is what I was talking about: how I caught back up. We're going down this hill, um, and basically, I'm uh, to the point here where it's like, well, yeah, I caught up, uh, but no, no attempt to make any passes because I'm fully aware that in about another 20 minutes or so I'm not going to be able to hold on and, and these guys will definitely be able to hold on. So I might as well not clog up the course any more than I have to. The uh, camera is getting a little bit uh, sprayed with mud and dirt and everything. Mostly that like tacky watery sand which uh, that will get wiped clean before too long. Um, eventually I do wipe that. But uh, yeah, this first lap, um, I go okay. The, uh, the first lap isn't too bad. I, I was getting around pretty okay. This is kind of a cool uphill and a uh, cool section at the top here with a turn track. And uh, this turn track is it's pretty, it was pretty cool. And that's one place where I found that People were really holding me up. Um, I don't know. I don't know what it is about the turn track, but every time I got in the turn track, it's really hard to pass, but also people um, it seemed were going much, much slower than me at this little turn track. I must be the turn track champ or something. Yeah, to pass anybody on here, you would just have to, like, run into them. There's no other way. <laughs> You'd have to knock somebody over. But, yeah, this course was high speed and uh, fairly safe. It was pretty cool. Really well marked. I appreciate the guys, uh, the guys who put this event on. They really did a good job. I was missing some of my knobs on the rear tire. I don't feel like that compromised my um, traction, really. Um, the knobs that are on it are actually pretty good still. In fact, I could probably run that tire for another race, but this 450 just puts so much stress on a tire that um, it, it's bound to happen. But I'm running the IRC M5B on the back, and um, it's pretty torn up. It's the no like I said, the knobs that are on there are actually still pretty good, but uh, there's a bunch missing. Well, not a bunch, a handful. But like I said, it's to the point where it's it's not really compromising my traction, really. Um, but uh, eventually it will. I'll have to replace it here probably in a few rides. Got those pro taper bars on there. Replaced the stock ones after running into that tree. So these pro tapers are feeling pretty good. And really the bike in general uh, feels pretty good. I would like to really get with a suspension guru and just have somebody valve the suspension for my weight and everything. That would be pretty sweet. Um, <clears throat> I've never really messed with the shock, but I have had the fork done. So the fork, um, the fork seems to work pretty good. 
uh, when coupled with the stabilizer I have on the front, but I'm not sure it matches up with the shock very well. I don't really know. But at these high speeds, you definitely want your bike working uh, the best that you can possibly make it work. And see that section right there I just hit uh, was sketchy. Like I didn't see that coming um, to the extent that uh, I should have. But that, that little jump right there was just weird. As you could see in the video, I just barely skimmed the top of it. But uh, future laps, I actually don't hit it that hard. Um, well. I was tired, otherwise I would have, but uh, yeah, in the future laps I pretty much just like scrub that as much as possible. Just hitting this little track here, um, looks like I'm running into some sort of traffic here that is not supposed to be there as far as I know. I don't know how uh, I caught up to this guy. I don't know if he's the first row starter or what, but definitely, I thought he was a course worker or something, but yeah, I thought it was kind of weird that he was there. Um, there's a few muddy sections here, but uh, I really like the di diverse terrain that they used for this course. They did some uh, grass tracks, and they ran it around this actual track here, and you drop down and uh, onto another grass track and then they throw you into some ravines and wide open sand washes. There's a lot of diversity in the terrain which I really like. This first lap I was really sh on the struggle bus um, going through this little grass track. It was it just felt awkward going through here for some reason that first lap. But I would say my favorite part of the course was actually um, right in front of the well basically where we started so as you go through the finish line after that there's a long stretch there with some whoops and some deep sand areas that like on this bike just feel amazing because you can just lean back and if you get the right rhythm down the bike just takes care of the rest so just go in the hyper hyper drive and you're like just flying So at this point of the race, I remember um, being pretty frustrated uh, just because I was uh, so tired. Like, that's a horrible feeling, being really, really exhausted and just fatigued to the point where you aren't going to do anything. There's nothing you're going to do about it. But uh, knowing that you could go so much faster, but you're just not able to, it's like a being in prison of your own body. It's like, for the love of God, just start working but uh, it's not gonna work <laughs> there's nothing you can tell it to make it work your arms and your legs and everything are just not gonna come back to life magically so this is what I'm talking about with uh, one of my favorite sections this bike is just like going in the hyperdrive here it's flying and um, it's just it's geared pretty good for this spot So I will show you guys um, some of the later laps in this course, just to give you an idea of how much I slowed down. I won't bore you with too much of it, just because nobody wants to see that, but <laughs> I think that it's interesting nonetheless, just, uh, just showing you guys a little bit of it, just because I think it's uh, good information to put on the video, just for full disclosure. I don't want to make it seem like I'm fast all the time. We're pretty much past that point anyways, considering I'm um, way behind people I shouldn't be way behind. But um, it gets worse. Trust me, it gets worse.
<laughs> oh yes. Pet the dog and give you energy. All the good energies. <laughs> Go, go, uh, go. I've got so much energy now. I feel 100%. All right, so I just wanted to show that because it's the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. That dog was so adorable. Um, I actually really did feel better after petting that thing. So I wanted to show you guys what I was like um, during the last stages of the race because I feel like on that last one, um, that last edit I did, I mainly showed like the first lap and that's really not representative of how the race went because I raced for two and a half hours. So um, here you can really see what it was like for me. Um, this is after, uh, I'd say this is about three quarters of the way through the race and um, I have slowed down considerably. And on some of these ridges, I'll even let my hand off the bars. Um, I couldn't find a lot of things just skimming through this video. One of the things I wanted to show you is um, I had stopped and I talked to uh, some of the flaggers for quite a while. So I was spent, um, but that's part of racing. You gotta get your endurance up. So um, it was definitely a good time, but I definitely need to come back more prepared next year. But yeah, I just wanted to show you guys a lot of this footage because it's an honest, it, it's more of an honest video. I go back and watch that other video and um, it shows a lot of the faster stuff. So this time I wanted to kind of give you guys the entire race, um, obviously without giving you the uncut race because they, they are um, over two and a half hours long. So um, that would take forever course I could do it I don't know that anybody would watch a lot of this footage I have tried to cut um, you'll have to excuse all the shakiness and bobbing around I'm not allowed to run a helmet cam so I'm using a body cam so I've kind of gone through this footage looking for the sections where it wasn't bouncing so much granted I did give you most of the first lap um, just because I wanted to show that because it's where most of the action was and it's when I was feeling the best so I gave you that but the rest of this is pretty much just um, sections where I thought the camera was somewhat pointing the right way uh, a lot of this race it's literally just pointing at the ground and then pointing at the sky it, it's all over the place anyway anyways guys I hope you enjoyed the video um, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to keep the channel alive, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Thanks, man. You need fuel? You're the best, man. No, I don't need fuel. Thank you.